Recently, my little brother got into hunting. The woods and camping were never something I ever enjoyed. I was more of an under a pile of blankets with a book kind of guy. I wanted to support him in his new hobby, so I found myself saying that I would go with him and his wife on a weekend hunting trip. The day before we left, I felt a small cold coming on. By the time that we got our camp set up and went into the woods to start hunting, I had a fever. My face was flushed and the gray rainy weather was doing nothing to help it. My brother lent me a rifle even though I had never used one before. I decided early on that I wasn't going to shoot anything. The head cold was a good excuse to do so. I was against a tree, sniffling, feeling the effects of my fever, when my brother shot something. I heard his wife gasp after something big in the distance thudded to the ground. When I looked over at the both of them, I realized something was very wrong. Their faces pale and in shock of what had just happened. At first, I was convinced my brother accidentally shot someone. I looked off through the trees, trying to see what had collapsed, spotting a white shape through the bush. I started forwards, ready to help while the other two remained frozen to the spot. I arrived first to look at what my brother had shot, and to my relief, it was a deer. It was pure white, and I stood in awe of the beautiful coat of fur. I have never seen a white deer before, and a pang of pain came to my chest over the fact that it was dead. Finally, my brother and his wife walked over, still pale. What is it? He asked in a hushed tone. I looked at him, confused about the question for a few seconds. It's a deer. How could he not see that? Looking over to study it again, trying to see what he meant. When my eyes landed on the deer's face, I finally started to understand the gravity of the situation. I knew that it had antlers, but for the life of me, I can't remember what the face looked like. My memory was a blur of white. While staring right at it, my brain refused to actually see it. I took a few steps back then, scared out of my mind and started to think my fever was messing up my head. That doesn't make any sense, I said in a low voice between some coughs. The deer in front of us was special, beyond special, and my brother had shot it. I looked at the wound that had killed the poor thing, to see pearl-shaded blood staining it. My stomach twisted in regret, and I felt like I was about to sob. I turned my head away, unable to keep looking at it. What should we do? His wife Kathy asked in a shaking voice. We shouldn't let the meat go to waste, my brother commented. I felt the entire forest fall silent at this comment. It was as if the air itself had stopped moving. It revolted me. It was terrible enough that this creature was dead, and my brother wanted to disrespect it even further. I knew that it was natural for animals to eat other ones, and logically, it would be a waste to not eat this deer. However, I just instinctively knew this creature was never meant to be eaten. It was something that existed outside of the natural order. Something powerful and yet fragile enough to be killed by a single bullet. Are you crazy? I hissed at him. Looking down at the white shape, I shook my feverish head. We'll let the forest take it. He reluctantly agreed. I put down the borrowed rifle and started to pick up fallen branches, my brother doing the same. Kathy gathered up wildflowers and in a short while, we had covered the deer as a sign of respect. We could never take back killing it, but we could show remorse. Without a word, we left the creature behind and with a heavy weight in our chest. When we arrived back into camp, I was feeling so ill, I turned to the moment that we got back. I bundled myself up in blankets and fell into a deep sleep, only waking to drink some water to ease my dry throat. 
My slight cold turned into a full-blown flu, and I was in no condition to walk out of the woods. When I woke again, it was morning but still gray and cold. How are you doing? Kathy asked me when I came out of my tent. Awful. What's the plan? It felt like my head was going to explode and my entire body was weak. She walked over and gave me a cup of hot tea, which was very much appreciated. We'll stick around until you feel better and the weather clears up. We should get you out of these woods, but it would nearly kill you if you had to walk through the rain to get to the truck. Just stay inside your tent and keep warm and dry. You brought some books, right? I nodded, sipping at my tea. That sounded like a good enough plan. I hoped my fever would only last another day and we could leave. What happened the day before really was freaking me out. The forest all around us felt hostile. The wind howled through the trees and I suppressed a shudder. I took my tea back inside my tent and got wrapped up in blankets once more, but not feeling any warmer. The wind kept howling outside the tent. I prayed my flimsy tent would hold if a storm came rolling in. The rest of the day, I drifted between trying to read and sleeping. I normally never got sick, so it was hitting me extra hard. When Kathy tried waking me up to eat some soup, I was in such a deep sleep that I didn't even stir, so she left me alone to offer later. The next day, I was feeling much better and starving from not eating much the past two days. I had my backpack in my tent, so I opened it to find the hidden snacks that I had stashed away. I had an entire box of oatmeal bars before getting outside of my tent. When I went outside, the rain had cleared up, but everything was still damp outside. Kathy was outside, trying to keep the fire going. Are you feeling any better? She asked me, looking and sounding exhausted. A bit. I think we could leave some time today if it doesn't start raining again. I offered. She looked between me and her tent, worried. Clearing her throat, she shook her head. James isn't feeling well. I think he must have caught your cold. Let's see how he's feeling in a few hours. I felt bad that my brother was sick and now suffering through what I just did. Mia would delay us leaving, but there was nothing we could do about it. I saw that we were out of firewood and I needed to get some air. Hey, I'll get us some wood. It'll give me something to do, too. I'll check on him in a few hours, make sure that he's been eating. Kathy gave me a grateful smile. From how bad she looked, I wondered if she had gotten sick, too. I left into the woods, trying my best to find anything that wasn't too damp to burn. I found some sticks hidden under leaves and logs that should be dry enough. I was the type to get lost easy, so I needed to stick close to camp. After I collected an armful of good enough wood, I was about ready to head back when something out of the corner of my eyes made me stop. On a bush was a few drips of shimmering liquid. I walked up to it to get a better look, not understanding what I was looking at. I was drawn away by the sound of retching off towards the camp. Forgetting about the strange liquid, I started back to check up on my brother and Kathy. When I had arrived back, the rain had started up again, making it too wet for us to start the fire back up anyway. Kathy was looking pale and chilled to the bone. I had wished the cold, damp weather would pass so we could finally leave. I started to wonder if I should just take my brother's truck and go get some help. My fever hadn't gone down entirely, and we had parked us so far away. I feared that I would too get ill if I braved the hike through the woods. Is everything alright? I asked. I put the wood away, covering it with some plastic hoping for it to stay dry. Kathy looked at me, a worried expression on her face. Before she could answer, my brother came out of his tent. It should have been impossible, but he looked even paler than Kathy. His skin nearly void of any color. I decided then that I would try to get some help. We needed to get the heck out of these woods. James, give me your keys, please. I said, holding out my hand for him to give me his truck keys from his pocket. He looked over at me, 
as if I was speaking a different language. Shaking his head, he took a sip of water from a flask that Kathy had handed to him. She looked scared stiff. James felt different. It was the way that he was moving and not really looking at us. No, just give me a few more hours of sleep. Then we'll all go. I never should have given in. I slowly brought my hand back, trying to think of an argument. Truthfully, I was frightened to go into the woods alone. But just a few more hours. Then we wouldn't even have to pack up our gear. We would just leave. James took Kathy's hand and they went back into their tent. Not being able to think of anything else to do, I went back into mine to get dry and warm. I was going to finish the last 100 pages of a book to give my brother time to sleep. I drifted off while I was reading. One moment, I had a book in my hand and the other, I was waking up in a pitch darkness. I sat up confused at what time it was. Slowly, my eyes adjusted and I could see a hint of light coming through the tent. Slipping back into the cold, damp outside world, I looked over to see a very weak fire burning. My brother stood just within the light. I opened my mouth to call out to him, but something felt wrong and I couldn't place it. The air was tense and my muscles started to lock up. Hearing me coming from the tent, my brother turned to look over at me. He still looked pale as death. His face was the same, but I just knew in that moment, I was no longer looking at my brother. He took a step towards me, an unknown purpose in his stride. I ran, without any plan. I ran off into the woods, trying to get away from whatever he had become. I was only running for a few minutes when I saw the light of a fire between the trees. It was faint, but I ran towards it praying somebody would help. I didn't think anybody else was camping so close to us, and I was thankful for it. I ran into the clearing, but my blood froze in my veins. It was not a new campsite. It was ours. I just ran back around even though I was positive that I had ran straight. My brother stood by the dying coals, the orange light shining in his eyes. I ran again. It was dark and the woods were just a maze of trees. It was understandable that I had gotten turned around. A few more minutes of running and I came crashing into our campsite again. In a blind panic, I just kept going. No matter what direction I took, I would always end up running towards our camp. My brother standing, silently watching me attempting and failing to escape. When I couldn't run anymore, I collapsed, gasping for air. I didn't understand what was going on. All I knew was that I could no longer leave. Please, I begged the pale figure. It was far too late to save my brother, but if there was even a hint of him left, he would let me and Kathy leave. His face was going out of focus. For whatever reason, my brain was refusing to see what it truly looked like. Let me and Kathy leave. I sat on the cold ground, shaking in fear. Deep down, I knew my brother was changing into something beyond my understanding, simply because he had shot a strange deer. My suspicions, I could not bear to say out loud, were confirmed by him when he finally spoke in a rasping voice. I cannot let her go. After all, she ate some of it too. My stomach sank and I felt like I was going to be sick. Killing the white deer by accident could be forgiven, but cutting into its body to devour its flesh could not. The thing that was once my brother lunged at me. He grabbed me by the neck as I struggled, desperate to get free. I got as far as the dying fire pit before he held me still. His strength was far beyond my own. I kicked and screamed trying to pry him away from me. I couldn't see his face clearly, but I saw his mouth. Oh God, whatever he became was something that no human I should ever see. It opened wide with countless teeth shining in the dying firelight. He had turned into something so twisted because of his unforgivable sin. 
I was only saved because I thought, for a brief moment, I saw a white figure behind my brother urging me to fight. I had nothing to lose, so I reached over to the nearby coals, the fear causing me to ignore the pain of grabbing coals and ash to toss into the creature's eyes. He let out a scream of pain and let me go, and I wasted no time scrambling free, but paused at the edge of the camp. I watched in horrified fascination as the thing that was once my brother screamed and thrashed around. Sickening cracking sounds came from his body as he started to turn from a human form into something completely different. Twisted with long pale limbs, I couldn't stomach the sight. I almost couldn't stand the idea of leaving Kathy behind. She was either already dead or turning into something else inside the tent and out of sight. I felt trapped. I knew if I left, I would end up back at the camp again. But off in the distance, I saw a hint of white through the trees, and I ran towards it. As I ran, I heard the monster I had left behind screaming at me to stay. This time, instead of looping back around, I noticed a hint of shimmering liquid on the ground and I followed it. Drop by drop, I kept going until my lungs felt like they were going to burst and my legs burned. The forest around me started to get lighter until I found myself running right into a snow-covered parking lot. I collapsed again, feeling weak in the snow soaked through my jeans. It wasn't the season for snow. The parking lot was right next to the ranger station. When I came running out exhausted, a ranger saw me and came outside to see what was going on. I couldn't keep myself awake until he got to me and I passed out in the slush. In the end, they never found James and Kathy. They found our abandoned campsite months ago and assumed all of us were done. I could never tell them what really happened because I don't know myself. I don't feel as if this was all the dream, or if my mind had just snapped. I'm certain that my brother is now something else out there inside the woods. I wonder why I was saved. What creature decided to show me the right way out? Was it the white deer, because I didn't need a part of it, or did it want me to live so I could tell others about what had happened? Whatever reason it might be, I'm thankful for my life. If you're ever out hunting, make certain you know what you're about to shoot before you pull the trigger, or else you might make a mistake that is going to change your life forever.